Welcome back in our series about Das Studio, the free 3D content manipulation app from Das 3D. I'm your gracious host, Javis Lewis, of course. And in this video, I wanted to extend what we talked about in our previous video, where it, where it was all about workspaces and styles. I've shown you how to apply different styles and how to change the workspace, but I haven't quite shown you how to customize your workspace into a, something that you can really make your own. So I always find that even though default layouts have their place, sometimes I just want to make slight adjustments to, to really ease the pain that we're all going through when we use super complicated software like Das Studio. So that really makes it uh, possible for us to have a better accessible, nicer experience because life's too short anyway. So. I said, as I said before, on my Windows system, I like using the 1080 by 1920 resolution on my monitor because that's just, you know, it's the native resolution of the monitor. And I like to use the dark side theme. But when I'm on my Mac, it's a slightly larger monitor, which has great real estate, but it's, it's makes the tabs really small. So I like to use slightly larger tabs, which means I have to use the Main Street theme. But the Main Street theme doesn't have the dark subduedness of the dark side theme. So maybe there's a way to change it. And let me tell you, there is. So let me show you how that works. I've created something like this. And this is, I call it the dark street theme because it's kind of an amalgamation between the main street large tabs and the dark street kind of color scheme and i got there by simply going over to window style and customize style and when we do that then we get this palette that comes up in which we can see every color that is used in the Das Studio interface. So any accent color, any sort of background color, it's all definable. Like here, the 3D axis, uh, red, green, and blue for the 3D manipulator to show you which axis is which you can customize that. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because it means you can also go way overboard and turn this into something that no one else can look at. But hey, maybe that's, that's the whole point of having fun like that. So here's what I did to apply the palette from the dark side theme into the main street theme. First of all, I would head over to window style and select a style. And you can see that here on the top, I have my default styles, dark side, highway and main street. And then I've called my, my own thing, which is called dark street here. So I made that myself. So first of all, I would load the dark side theme and I have to select it up here and then I have to hit accept so that I can see that on my monitor that is kind of locked in and uh, now I can see the small tabs again and I can see more or less the same color scheme and I'm doing that so that I can head over back into Windows style and customize style and now I'm gonna all I'm gonna change here are the base colors so I'm gonna head over to base and now I'm gonna take a screenshot I'm on my Mac, by the way, so I can do that with Shift Command 4. But on the Windows system, it's, it's just as possible. I just haven't got the screenshot key in my head right now. I think it's the print screen key. Done. I'll, I'll let you know. Then we take a screenshot of just these numbers here, because that's the, those are important. And we've got little palettes that we can sample. And then we just cancel out of that. And now I'm going to switch over to the Main Street theme again. So I'm going to head over to Window, Style, and select the style. Now I'm going to head over to the Main Street theme. Hit Accept. Now I get large buttons and I get the light interface again. And there we go. That's what it looks. So again, the interface stands out a little bit more and it's almost like saying, ooh, I need to wear sunglasses here. But it's, you know, it does its job and, you know, Here's how we can customize that. So first of all, I'm going to make my, my window a little bit smaller here so that I can see both the screenshot that I've just taken as well as that dialogue that we've just looked at at the same time. So I'm just going to bring that over here maybe. And then I head back into Das Studio and again, head over Window, Style and Customize Style. And now I select the base colors here because these are the ones that I want to modify. And then let me just bring that over here so that we have both of these side by side showing. And so we can see that these numbers here, they're different. So they're just grayscale values. I could use color values to change these things here. And all I need to do is put these numbers into these fields. That's really all there's to it. 
there is there would technically be a slightly easier way let me see if it works i don't think it does but let's let's have a look so you click into one of those cells here to bring up a color picker and on the mac it looks slightly different than on the windows system but the, the principle of a color picker is the same you get on the mac you have different types of layouts here i'm going to choose the rgb sliders because these numbers kind of match these numbers so all I need to do is match these numbers with those numbers. So we're looking at the background color right now, and that should be 95. So one way of doing it is to just hack 95 into each of these fields here. And then I get this hex value. As soon as I click OK, then this color value changes. I don't see that change in the Dash Studio interface just yet, but as soon as I hit preview, that would happen if I even know where the background color is set. I, I don't even know where that is, but it's one of those things. We're just, we're just gonna change each of these color notes here. There is a, an easier way technically to do this. So foreground color here is 255, which is a pure white. And in the dark side theme, it'll be 204. So another way that we can bring these numbers across is in theory that we just use the eyedropper tool. So click on the eyedropper tool, then it turns into this a loop that makes everything larger it looks like Sherlock Holmes here but all we need to do is now hover over here and make sure we find the right light gray spot here under the foreground color and then just left click with your mouse and that brings this value into here so it's 204 so now all I need to do is hit OK and that in theory should bring 204 into this field in practice it says 193 I don't know why, maybe there's some kind of, I, I really don't know why, it doesn't make any sense and it's it's a bug that you can be absolutely sure of will never ever be fixed but it's, uh, you know, that's, that's how it's supposed to work and it would make life easier to just uh, pick and drop from palettes that, are, that already exist but I guess we can't have everything. So I'm going to go through here and change all these numbers and uh, you don't have to watch me do that because I really don't want to bore you to death and as soon as I'm done I would hit accept and that would lock in all these new colors that I've defined there which we can't really see right now. I can't just make that uh, viewport a little bit bigger but imagine this is now our changed color scheme you get the drift and uh, you would head over back to window style and then you'll save style as and when you do that then this little window comes up in which you can give that style a name so i can call it uh, maybe dark street test and then you give it a funky description And of course, you know, make sure you spell it correctly. And then as soon as you hit accept, something else happens actually. And first of all, you get this message and now you can select it from window style, select style. Uh, so here's Main Street again. And here are the two themes that, that I made. So Dark Street is my theme and then the, or my style rather. And then Dark Street Test is this. And the, something else is happening here with Dash Studio. It takes a little screenshot of whatever's happening in the top left corner, just about here. And it just grabs whatever is on your screen at the time you save the thing. So if you want to see something else, like a different type of example, uh, put a different palette here and it'll be of that portion of the screen that Dash Studio will take a little screen grab off. And then that gets saved as well. If you're happy, you can just hit accept or you can hit preview and then, you know, we've gone through this before. Uh, or if you think, hey, that was just a test, I really don't need that style anymore. You can also delete that just by hitting delete styles and then pick the one you don't want to use anymore. So dark street test, for example, hit accept and then that'll get rid of that. While we're here on the Mac, I just wanted to show you this other thing that I mentioned in one of my previous videos. That is, if you wanted to move palettes around on the Mac, then it appears slightly different. So if I wanted to move my Smart Content tab between shaping and surfaces here, for example, it works exactly the same way. So you left click and drag, but notice that I don't actually get any kind of ghosting around here. I guess I see something just there in the back of my cursor, but I can't really be sure what that is so if I if I move it fast enough I can just about catch that something is happening there's a little rect rectangle behind my cursor there and it works just the same you have to drop things between where you want that palette to drop you just don't get a preview of it so you know if I do that if I now let go of my mouse or my tr my trackpad here 
then the palette drops there so I can still move them I just don't get a preview of where the thing is going to be moving to especially when that big um, hand icon appears here so that's the only difference uh, if I were to move this out, same thing happens. I can move the palette here and it, it'll drop here. If I move it to a different place, again, I see nothing, uh, but the ghosting should technically still be there or you should get that little um, rectangle that tells you this is where the palette will be dropped. So it works the same way. It just isn't that obvious. So some Mac users have told me over the years, hey, I don't think I can move my palettes. And yes, you can. You just have to trust that the, the palette moves with your cursor. So as long as you left click, the palette will move. That was it. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, then please share it with friends, family and total strangers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.